Hi, and welcome to this video on compound interest. We have that Veronica opened an RRSP account and deposited $1,800 into it. She then deposited $900 at the end of the first year and $625 at the end of the second year. The RRSP was earning 3.7% compounded quarterly. And we want to know two things. We want to know the accumulated value of the investments at the end of the second year and the accumulated value of the investments at the end of the seventh year. And we're going to write answers to the nearest cent. To work with the problem right here, we need to understand how to find the future value of money based on compound interest. And the formula we will need over and over again is the following one. The future value of money equals the present value of money times 1 plus i to the n, where i is the periodic interest rate, and that periodic interest rate comes from dividing the nominal interest rate, which is usually the interest rate given. In our case, we have 0 0.037. That's 3.7% in decimals. Divided by the compounding frequency. And the compounding frequency here is 4 because interest is compounded quarterly. And n is the number of compounding periods in a time span. So i in our case is 0 0.00925. That's what comes from dividing 0 0.037 by 4 and n is going to vary depending on the time period we're looking at. Now, to know what happens at the end of the second year, we need to know what happens at the end of the first year. There are some changes uh, that occur after one year and after two years because Veronica deposits extra money after the end of the first year and after the end of the second year. Now, the account starts with $1,800. After one year, those $1,800 are worth $1,800 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.00925 raised to the number of compounding periods that we have in one year, which is four. So that those $1,800 have grown into this amount of money after one year. But Veronica deposits $900 at the end of the first year. Then after one year, what Veronica has in her account is the amount of money the $1,800 grew into plus $900. Okay. Now to find the accumulated value of the investments at the end of the second year, we need to consider how much this amount that we just wrote grows in one year. So one more year passes and that amount that we just calculated grows according to the same formula we have here. And in one year, we have four compounding periods. So we take $1,800, multiply by 1 plus 0 0.00925 to the 4 plus 900. And we multiply by 1 plus 0 0.00925 to the 4. And because Veronica deposits $625 into her account at the end of the second year, then we need to consider that amount as well. So after two years, Veronica has this amount of money in her account. To compute that amount of money and round it off to the nearest cent, we need to use a calculator. We would type in bracket 1800 bracket 1 plus 0 0.00925 raised to the power of 4 and plus 900, close brackets, times, and here we forgot the times, 
There you go. And then we have 1 plus 0 0.00925 raised to the 4, and then plus 625. After we use a calculator, we get to the number that is approximately equal to 3496.35 and then a number greater than 5, so we round these off to 36. Okay. All right, so this number right here is the answer to part A. Now, to get to the answer to part B, we need to see what happens after five more years pass. We know what happens after two years, and we need to know what happens after five more years. And after five more years, what happens is that this amount of money grows according to this formula right here. So let's apply this formula right once again. Let's erase what happens right here. After five more year, years pass, we have the $1,800 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.00925 to the 4 plus 900 times 1 plus 0 0.00925 to the 4 plus 625. And that amount of money grows according to this formula right here. We take the amount of money in present value after two years multiplied by 1 plus i and i in our case is 0 0.00925 raised to the n where n is the number of compounding periods in five years and since there are four compounding periods in one year we have four times five that's 20 compounding periods in five years and then we use a calculator to compute this amount to get the accumulated value of the investments at the end of the seventh year. And that accumulated value can be rounded off to 4203.31 dollars. Okay, that's it for this problem. Uh, everything relies on this formula right here. The future value of an investment equals the present value times 1 plus the periodic interest rate to the number of compounding periods. And uh, we took the extra deposits into account to find answers to parts A and B of this problem. If you have questions, let me know. Just write a comment and I'll be happy to help you. Bye-bye.